November 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation Chapter 3 from the New Testament. To the angel of the church in Sardis, write the following. This is a solemn pronouncement of the one who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds, that you have a reputation that you are alive, but in reality you are dead. Wake up then, and strengthen what remains that was about to die, because I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Therefore, remember what you received, and heard, and obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come against you. But you have a few individuals in Sardis who have not stained their clothes, and they will walk with me dressed in white, because they are worthy. The one who conquers will be dressed like them in white clothing, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will declare his name before my Father and before his angels. The one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write the following. This is a solemn pronouncement of the Holy One, the True One, who holds the key of David, who opens doors no one can shut, and shuts doors no one can open. I know your deeds. Look, I have put in front of you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, but you have obeyed my word, and have not denied my name. Listen, I am going to make those people from the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews, yet are not, but are lying, Look, I will make them come and bow down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Because you have kept my admonition to endure steadfastly, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come on the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one can take away your crown. The one who conquers I will make a pillar in the temple of my God and he will never depart from it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven from my God, and my new name as well. The one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea, write the following. This is a solemn pronouncement of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the originator of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich and have acquired great wealth and need nothing. But do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Take my advice and buy gold from me, refined by fire, so you can become rich. Buy from me white clothing so you can be clothed, and your shameful nakedness will not be exposed. And buy eye salve to put on your eyes so you can see. All those I love I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into his home and share a meal with him and he with me. I will grant the one who conquers permission to sit with me on my throne, just as I too conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. The one who has an ear had better hear what the Spirit says to the churches. God, in Revelation 3, we see the three remaining letters show up for the total of seven churches. Uh, we see Sardis who has loyalty, um, but their works are dead. Uh, they're doing works almost to earn salvation, uh, which I have a few friends who are trying that route right now, and it's not working so well for them. Uh, we see uh, Philadelphia, who very much is like uh, Smyrna, who got co commendations, but you really didn't uh, have anything that's, that you were super concerned about with that church. You said that Philadelphia uh, was uh, enduring, keeping your word, uh, not denying your name. Then you get to Laodicea. 
And Laodicea is a mess. Um, you say that they're spiritually blind, bankrupt, naked, and probably the worst possible thing they could be is lukewarm. And that particular verse where you say, I would rather you didn't care about anything at all, especially the church, me, my word, or I wish you were completely on fire for me, passionate about me and having a relationship with me. At least then you'd be truthful one way or the other. But being on the fence, being lukewarm, uh, never doing this too much or this too little. Uh, God, you actually say you're going to vomit them out of your mouth. And I think of, I think of our lives. And how we get distracted by the day, we get distracted by the world, we get distracted by our families, our jobs, all these other things that are worldly things that we get distracted by. And on those days where we are definitely lukewarm, de probably varying towards cold, but definitely lukewarm, I, this verse just comes in and sits on my heart and reminds me where my attentions need to be. It's one of the more powerful uh, scriptures I think that is in the Bible about you're really clear you can be cold and you can be one of the people who are persecuting my people or you can be on fire and be hot but if you're this in-between stuff no and then you go on to explain to them what they need to do that they need to uh, buy gold from you and white garments and solve for their eyes but here's the absolutely amazing thing is they wouldn't be able to afford what you're asking of them. That just like everyone, that it's only through you that we would be able to acquire something like that. It's only through your grace and your mercy that we are able to acquire anything close to what it is that you're asking us to do. God, we can't do this on our own. And we try so hard to be independent and in control and it's exactly why we end up being in this lukewarm situation in this world, completely distracted by the world and lukewarm in our faith. Not only uh, how others see us, but more importantly in our relationship with you. God, remind us today that it is only with you that we can do what you're asking us to do. It's only with you that our lives would be on fire for you. And it is only with you that we're going to get this right. God, I thank you so much for your patience with us. I thank you for your discipline um, that comes from love and teaching us how to get this right. <laughs> some, for some of us, time after time, how to get this right. And I truly thank you for your son and his ultimate sacrifice for me. It's in his name that I pray. Amen.